Hello, this is David DeHilser. I'm a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you're not buying exactly what mainstream physics and cosmology are selling, then this is the place for you. There are thousands and thousands of scientists working around the world who work outside the mainstream, who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so you want to make sure you want to go down below, click the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, so you'll be alerted when my next video drops. Well, I get emails, like I said, and I get, I'm on email chains, or a lot of dissident thinkers are, and I got this one from one of my favorite Brazilian physicists out there, and this is from Dr. Andre Coach Torres Assis. He's from the Institute of Physics at the University of Campinas in São Paulo, Brazil. Bem-vindo todos vocês que são brasileiros. As you don't know, I lived there for about three years. I speak Portuguese every day. My wife was Brazilian from Rio de Janeiro. So, um, but he is one of my, one of my favorite Brazilian uh, scientists and critical thinkers. There are many others there, some great thinkers there. And he sends this email about a new book he has on electricity. And I have the link down below. So if you want to, you can get the whole book in PDF format in English and in Portuguese para vocês brasileiros. So what is it, what's this book about? Well, let's take a look at it. It is Os Fundamentos Experimentais e Históricos da Eletricidade, Volume 2. Hey, André. André Caté Assis. And um, he is a physicist and he is a professor it, of course, that's the Portuguese version, but of, he has an English version. He speaks English very well. In fact, um, if you look above there, I have an interview with him. If you want to uh, see him in person and hear him for about an hour, I interviewed him long distance from Brazil in English. And uh, so this is Experimental and Historical Foundations of Electricity. This book is gold for we critical thinkers, especially my dad and I who are doing a physical model and includes electricity and all the, the components and then static electricity, all these things he's going to talk about. But he is a critical thinker. He is a dissident scientist too, but he's in a regular mainstream university, which is pretty amazing. So you can get this book online as well. You can get it in paperback if you want that. And so oh, it's expensive. I think that's the minimum that it costs him to do it. So Experimental History Foundation of Electricity. Volume 2 of the Experimental and Historical Foundation of Electricity deals with the most fundamental aspects of physics. The book describes the main experiments and discoveries in the history of electricity. It deals with the attraction, uh, with attraction and repulsion, positive and negative charges, conductors and insulators, electrification by friction, contact, induction, the tr Trebo electric series, electrification of, of adhesive tapes, equilibrium distribution of charges. Listen, this is super thorough. I mean, this is, this is just a gold mine for those people like our, my, my dad and I, for instance, who are making a model. I mean, we have to be able to describe all of these things. And he says at the end, he says, historical aspects are presented together with relevant quotations from the main scientists. A large bibliography is included at the end work. This is bravo to this work. So uh, before we get into it, though, why is Mr. Andre Assis really considered sort of a dissident? He is a critical thinker, the way I like to think of it. It's because Faraday and Maxwell's theory is based on electromagnetic um, fields. That's what's taught in today in textbooks and in universities. And let's take a read because it's really important to set up the background before we get to his, his uh, amazing setup in his book on electricity. He says, the electromagnetic theory appearing in most textbooks was developed by many authors, including Michael Faraday, James Clark, Max, Clark Maxwell, Maxwell, and Henrik Antoon Lorenz. These are all household names to all physicists and all physics students. The theory assumes that a moving charge particle called the source charge generates an electric field and a magnetic field around it. Uh, these, those fields would, would be propagated in space, typically at light velocity. When they reach uh, another, uh, they, when they reach one another moving charge, uh, moving uh, another char moving charge particle called a test charge, the, the, these fields would exert an electric force and magnetic force on this test charge. One of the great problems with this theory is to understand the meaning of, the, of these electromagnetic fields. Usually this topic is not discussed in textbooks. 
Yes, there are problems. I tell you that all the time. I love this. This is actually at the very end of his book. I had to go searching for it. Um, Faraday, Maxwell, and most and most textbooks present the several several definitions for the field concept. Amen. We talk about the field all the time. Don't give it. Then we don't give it a physicality. My dad and I do. Um, some th- sometimes they say that in, it is a region of space around the source charge. In other situations, they claim that the field propagates in space. Wow. Sometimes they define the field as a vector quantity that has both magnitude and direction. In some contexts, they mention that the fields carry linear momentum and energy. They also prevent, may, present many other different definitions and, pro- and pro- properties of the field concept. The problem is, is that several definitions contradict one another. Really? Mainstream having contradict... And this, folks, this is the most basic stuff you learn about electric fields and magnetic fields and electricity and charge and all that. It, 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 why is it confusing? Well, when you, the reason, I will tell you before we read it, the reason, well, let me read it first, and I'll tell you. Uh, the problem is that several definitions contradict one another. For instance, how can a region of space propagate in space? <laughs> high five, high five to Andre Assis. The gravitational field, the electric field, and magnetic field have different dimensions. Therefore, these three magnitudes could not have the same name, field, as, they, as are the magnitudes of different nature. Each one of these Three magnitudes should be classified in a different category, receiving a different name according to the category where it belongs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Parabéns para você, Dr. André Assis. And, of course, it says um, they are, there are many contradictions between these several definitions of the field concept, which will not be discussed here. He does discuss that in his other books. Uh, I'll put a link below on all his books on Amazon. Why does this happen, folks? Why is he saying there's contradictions? You know why? Because their model sucks. Excuse my language. Their model is no good. When your model is no good and confusing and you don't have one, let's, they don't have one. Like, Andreas Cis notices that? Well, what happens when you don't have one and you call a field? No one knows what it is. Ye, the people writing about it are all over the place. This is a symptom of no model or a bad model or a terrible model, whatever you want to put it. And Mr. Andreas Cis, of course, doesn't just complain about it. He acts upon it. He says, okay, Weber's electrodynamics based on interaction between electrified particles. There's another theory which explains the phenomena without utilize, utilizing concepts of electric and magnetic fields. It is based on the direction and interaction between electrified particles. There's no intermediate agent for this interaction. Oh, a dissident critical thinker. And he says, the works of Newton, Coulomb, and Ampere, Ampere is another one he really likes, uh, scientists, were developed by the physicist Wilhelm Edward Weber. If you're speaking German, of course, you just make all your W's, V's, and you sound like, you know, you're really, but he is very uh, influential to Dr. Andreas Cis. And of course he says, Weber obtained a force between part, uh, electrified particles depending on, right, depending on only the distance between the, these charges on the relative radial velocity between them and on the relative radial acceleration between them. It is, it is a central force acting along a straight line connecting these two particles and, and complying with the principle of action and reaction. It satisfies the three principles of conservation, namely linear momentum, angular momentum, and energy. So it's a simpler system. It's there. They just jumped over it. Why? Because Maxwell and all those guys and Lorenz, they got take, taken over by the fantasia, fantasia, the, the fantasies of relativity. So you can imagine. Weber's electrodynamics is not discussed in modern textbooks. <laughs> just like I said. Why? Because Andreas Cis, if you look at his interview, again, I'll have that at the very end. I also have it uh, uh, in the beginning. You have that. Now I have it below too. Um, he says that it's been taken over by the, the, imag- the world of Einstein and relativity and all that stuff and all that magic. So despite this fact, there's a growing interest in, the the- in this theory in recent times. 
Of course, Andre Assis is on that forefront. This interest has been motivated by new experiments and new theoretical results. Huh? That means the other ones can't explain it. Maybe these can. I believe in Weber's electrodynamics and consider it the deepest and most important formulation ever presented describing interaction between electrified particles. I have been working on this theory ever since I discovered it. Okay, let's get into his book a little bit. Um, yeah, you got you can read all about this. Um, I'm here just to inform you these things because we get these emails and I get them and you, you don't get them and I am not my job on this channel is to inform you about stuff you'll never find anywhere else. So he gets into the book right away and he talks about the amber effect. Amber, you know, that sort of uh, electrifying by friction. This is what he considers to be really and historically is considered to be the simplest and older experiment in electricity. He starts there in this whole book. And that's what's amazing. These are really amazingly simple experiments that you can do, any student can do, but it brings up the fundamental problems with modern physics and there are models. And he says, Weber is a much better model. So let's keep going forward. Oh, here you go, know, you can take bits of paper. And there's that, uh, you got an acrylic ruler, and a plastic straw to hold uh, pieces of paper, taking care not to touch the paper. Nothing happens. So he talks about it, the plastic straw far away from the piece of paper. When the plastic straws move near the piece of paper, nothing happens. Then what do you do? Well, you take something, you rub it, and then he has F, 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 probably for force. You take that, and now you bring it to the paper, and lo and behold, it attracts. And those paper, just like, you know, and we call it electrical attraction. Well, he does this throughout the book, and I'm not going to get into it. You can read about it on your own. You can get the book for free down below. And it here's a list of materials. Plastic straws, acrylic ruler, paper, napkin, plastic bag, thin. If you are a homeschooler, this is a perfect book for you. Because listen, look at all that. Paper, A or letter size, aluminum foil, tissue paper, spool of cotton, thread, and, and twine, paper fasteners, pins, needles, nails. Whoa, this is like my stuff. When I was a kid, I used to make all kinds of inventions and things with stuff, wood skewers, metal, and it goes on. It goes, a uh, neon lamp and LED. Oh, now we're getting to something. And pizza pan, metal, oh, look at that. Uh, it is really quite amazing, uh, all this book. And again, he, he says, okay, we're going to look at a Trebo Electric. I'm just going to give you one example right in the beginning here. Uh, Trebo Electric Series. Uh, and that Trebo Electric Series, Electrified Bodies, it is, these are when you be able, you can rub these bodies, they become uh, charged, electrified, whatever you want to say. And he has this Trebo Electric Series, hair, smooth glass, human skin, synthetic polymer, all the way down to rigid acrylic PVC tube hard rubber. And I would imagine this is a scale, meaning things get less electrified and things get more electrified. Because why? Positive to negative. Here's a, give you an example of some one of the setups he has. There is a glue drop, a thin cardboard, tissue paper, strip, plastic straw, and a support. These are things you can do, especially with students. You can take that and you dip it in water and this happens and you notice it's a detector. I'm not going to get into the details. What's amazing to me is he, Andrea Cis, and my father have very similar. Um, oh, before we get that, I'll get to that. Um, insulating behavior. So he even gets into electric circuits. You got a battery, you got a, a light bulb, and you got uh, it's sort of just a circuit there, and the light bulb goes on. Oh, and then you're going to look at um, tape and see how that, what kind of things, how's this all conducting? And he's, he makes you think of what is electricity? How does this all work? And it is quite amazing. And before I get to the conclusion here, um, my conclusions, I do want to say something because I just thought of it, and that is my father and Andrea Cis are those people that when I first heard, hear them and heard my father speaking about this stuff as just a, another scientist sort of taking, you know, stepping back, they seem to talk about very fundamental and simple things. And I thought, eh, simple things are not interesting. Boy, is that a that completely wrong. It is the most basic things. Like my father says, does the moon rotate? Because it's facing us the whole time. It doesn't rotate according to us. Wow. It's not an easy, easy question, not an easy answer. But if you look at what my father, if you watch my father's 
videos. And you should um, take a look up there. Um, Particle Guru, click on it. He's growing. He was at 100. Now he's, he's going on his way to 200. Um, he and Andrea Cease talk in very, very basic terms. But these basic terms are absolutely the fundamentals of science. And they both share that quality. And that is something that I am not, it's not, it's not sort of, I, I don't know. That, that to me, I admire quite a bit. So they fool you. You just think it's simple. Then you start to think about it. You go, oh my gosh. And then that's where the admiration comes in. That's what's happening with my father online. I'd love Andreas. He used to do one, but he's just a busy guy. So he's going to keep doing the books and we'll, be, we'll just keep talking about this for him. And so what are my conclusions here? Well, Andreas Cease and Electricity. Get the book. It's right down below. Click on it. Read through it. Do not treat these things, fundamental things, these simple things that seem simple as things to brush aside. No, I'm gonna, I want to talk about, you know, strings and anti-strings. No, we don't have our models. He's saying that our models, Maxwell, Lorenz, and then of course, on top of that, Einstein, all of these things got to be looked at. There are problems with those things. And maybe the answers are already there. In this case, he's saying Wilhelm Weber has a better answer. My, pa my father and I have a particle model that gives physicality to do all the fields, all the things. We don't have positive, negative, and charge and all that. It's just force of bodies hitting each other. And the whole universe can be made that way. Whether it's right or wrong, it can. It's a simpler model. And that's what he is proposing. He is a critical thinker. He's a he has a prestigious position in physics at a prestigious university in Brazil. Yes, he does. Um, he's a, he has doing a great historical view on electricity. You will not get anywhere else. That's one of the things about dissident and critical thinkers. When something isn't right and we don't know about it, we go back and we study the history better than the people writing the history books now. This is a fact. Dissidents have a better view of modern physics and historical science than the mainstream. That's by definition. How do you go forward? You got to look at it and say, hey, the past has either answers that are better or it shows all the data that we need for better models. That's what he's doing. Going back to the fundamentals, and that's what he does. That's what the, the students in Nepal says. We don't want to go be specialized, specialized, specialized in the left-handed quirk on Tuesdays that come out from the sun uh, and neutrinos that oscillate into something else. They want to look at fundamental questions of the universe. And that's what Andreas Cis does very well. He gives real hands-on experiments. Things that if you are homeschooling, you can teach your kids. This is a great teacher of electric, electrical and charge and all that. And I mean, it is thorough. It stimulates new interests from students. So if you have a new student and they can do these things and they look at it, wow, why is that happening? How do you think, what do you think is really happening physically? Well, you know, our textbooks just say that it happens with, uh, uh, you know, by fee uh, like he said, in a bunch of mumbo jumbo that you can't, that it, it, is all mixed up. And we know why, because their models aren't good. He teaches Weber, a uh, Weber, and a different model from mainstream physics in a university. Oh my goodness. And reading his work will definitely spark ideas in your head about how this all works absolutely does. My dad and I are building our model and we have to describe everything here just like he is doing it. So, great book. Congratulations, André Assis. Parabéns, meu amigo. Você escreveu um livro incrível. Eu sou um grande uh, estudante de você, admirador também. Parabéns, 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 André. Okay, so remember what I say. Never take my word or anyone else's on faith. Stay critical, stay thinking. I'm Dave D. Hilser. I am your science therapist showing you things that no one else will on the internet. Ciao for now.